Rumors suggest a new Friday the 13th movie is on the way, but are they true? And Evil Dead the game just treated us with a new look at Mia and David Allen. We break down these topics and more on this episode of Slash and Cast, coming up next. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Slashing Cast. My name is Riley. My name is Nick. And we're back for the first time in a long time doing an episode of Slash Cast. Not, not even just doing an episode of Slash Cast, but doing it at the same table, in the same room, and in, in relatively, I say relatively because it's hard to say professional, but relatively professional. Like, there are lights, there are two cameras, some nice microphones, we sound okay. Um, but yeah, it, it's this should be like a new relative norm. I mean, it, we this should kind of be where we're looking at in terms of future content on this channel to, to a degree. Uh, of course, still going to post like gaming news updates and things like that separately. But here we can go and have discussions on certain horror topics, have the weekly horror news and, and just do what we started this channel in the first place, what we love to do. And that's talk about horror movies, horror video games, horror television series, just horror in general. And that's what today is going to be, basically a little bit of a warm-up episode. We only have a handful of topics that we're just going to kind of walk through today. Um, but I want to talk about, first of all, why we had the opportunity to do this just really quickly, because just recently, both of us started working, uh, doing some work with Boss Team Games, uh, who, of course, you would know who published Evil Dead the Game. I, we don't do anything with Evil Dead, really. Like, uh, there's no play testing. There's, it, it's very rare for to do anything Evil Dead related. Um, what we primarily do is social media and content driven. So, uh, separate from Evil Dead. Uh, although, hey, uh, Saber, if you ever want me to play test, I'd love to. Yeah, it would be an Please. honor. But honestly, the last three times an update has been posted on like the evil dead twitter i had no idea it was coming out <laughs> had no idea uh those things were dropping and uh, two of which we're actually gonna talk about today i did no idea that these these things were being uh were being dropped and i didn't know about the details surrounding these characters so it's fun to talk about and we can um also create those as well and that's something as well uh, that's very open about these jobs that we can continue to criticize and talk about on Slashcast, whatever the hell we want. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to be doing today. That's why we're going to talk about Evil Dead. So, But before we get there, let's talk first about Halloween End. Do you be keeping up with Halloween Ends? A little bit, a little it, bit, just whatever, whatever's been coming out. Crazy, a little crazy here and there. It, God, Halloween End scares the hell out of me. Yeah. I, 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 do, I have been keeping up, specifically like with Jimmy Champagne and we watched the movie. Uh, I, I try to keep up with them really closely because... I feel like they are the most act like they don't they don't dive into all the clickbait articles. You know what I'm saying? Right. There's a lot of clickbait for Halloween and Friday the thirteenth. We'll talk about that. We'll get there. We'll get there. But there's a lot of stuff. Um it's these are huge IPs, so they often have a lot of clickbait and theories related to them. Uh one of which that was interesting lately is the whole two cut thing. This isn't clickbait, but the whole two cut theory about Halloween, because we know in test screenings that there are two cuts that were screened. One of which did really well. One of which had some controversy. Rumor has it that maybe they're going to have one show in theaters. One cut is in theaters, and the other cut shows on Peacock. Yeah, that's that's wild. It is, that's kind of. I think it's kind of scary yeah. uh, to do that, and you're playing with a little bit of fire because unless people know that, which I feel like you got to realize how many casuals see these movies. Right. You know what I'm saying like there's only so many people like you and I, you you listening, watching, that are keeping up with these things, I feel like they could miss it pretty easily. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But uh, just today, actually, or yesterday, Empire Magazine uh, dropped a new uh, pretty gory image for Halloween Ends. We haven't seen too much gore related to Halloween Ends. So. And actually, David Gordon Green, we have a quote here from him that says, and quote, it changes every day. In theory, the picture is locked. But this morning, I called the editor and said, what if we do this one thing? I speak with John Carpenter and Jamie Lee Curtis regularly about it. It's exciting, uncertain, satisfying, and sad. I've enjoyed the ride, but it's probably time to get off. I think we're going to go out with a big bang. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if like, that's another one of these Halloween ends moments where I'm like, I don't know if that excites me or scares the hell right. out of me. Coming down to The Wire, I mean, people don't realize how often that happens as well. There's uh, some movies that have went up to the last day uh, making editing changes, mm -hmm. so... I'm all for that. It, it shows, one, that David Gordon Green cares enough to continue making these changes this late in the game. He cares enough about where this image is going. So, yeah, keep making changes as long as it uh, continues to get better. I'm, right. I'm all right with that. I wonder 
what are those things that he's trying out? I, I would love to see a director's cut of just David Gordon Green's uh, take on all the movies. Yeah. Uh, just a, a different cut that he could dive into. But uh, I, I do think it's interesting the way he says it's exciting, uncertain, satisfying, and sad. Sad. Hmm. It's been, they've said a lot uh, several times yeah. that only one will survive. So, Lori probably, you know, is going to die. Uh, it makes sense. Michael, I mean, you can't really kill Michael. I think it's still to this day in contract, you know, you can't kill Michael, uh, you know, definitively. But still, you could be as close, like, you go, you could Halloween H2O it or get as close as possible. Yeah. Uh, you go crazy with it, but I don't know. I'm curious uh, where it's going. And, and he did have uh, one other quote that said, if our second film was a free-for-all, violent chaos, this is a more intimate, atmospheric conclusion. Which I tremendously prefer. Yeah, need that atmosphere. Kind of kind of missed it a little bit in Kills. Oh, just a little bit. Yeah, it, a little I, bit. It really missed the mark. <laughs> like, story-wise, character-wise, there's just nothing to really care about in that movie. Especially, like, the way they did the legacy characters is pretty dirty, I thought. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I am excited for Halloween Ends, but my, like, I'm down here, man. The bar is very low for me. Yeah, it, especially after Kills. I mean, Kills, you know, we, we saw the trailers and we're like, oh, okay. You know, set the bar a little lower and it missed. Yeah, I yeah, because I, I was still really excited when I went and saw Kills. I couldn't, I didn't think it possibly be what it was. But ends, you know, it's been quoted. <laughs> I hate to throw him under the bus a little bit because he got in trouble for this. Uh, Christopher Nelson said it was, it's weird and different. Uh, he did get shit from Universal for saying that. Like, they told him not to talk about it anymore because <laughs> of that. Uh, so, yeah, weird and different. You you have, I don't know. To be fair, Kills was different. Yeah, the whole Corey Cunningham thing, which is, uh, obviously, it's very legitimate. Uh, that's, like, the legit plot synopsis. Uh, the Corey Cunningham and the fake Michael. There's going to be multiple Michaels, and that's what brings Laurie back into the mix. I, I don't know. It's, in my head, I'm like, wow, that sounds like it's going to be really hard to pull off and have Halloween fans will appreciate it. Will it seems like it'd be hard for Halloween yeah. fans to buy in? And I know I'm one of those guys that's a stubborn asshole and is going to judge it for not living up to the original. You know, uh, I don't know. We'll see. I like Halloween 2018 though. Yeah. So I, it can be done. We'll see. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it's good. <sighs> God, yeah. Seriously, I hope so. Uh, I'm praying for it. But yeah, Halloween ends. It's it's, it's it's very close. It's weird how close it is now. It's another one of those times where I feel like it never was going to come out. We'll just keep getting new images and whatnot. But, yeah, it's October 14th, hitting both theaters and Peacock the same day. So. Even at the game, let's talk about it a little bit. We got a new look at both David and Mia Allen. Uh, this is part of the Plaguebringer DLC. They're coming on September 8th alongside a new demon. Uh, David and Mia are part of the season pass. They will be purchasable, and the demon is free for everybody. So... Uh, hopefully that means there will be a lot more people that want to play Demon. Yes. Although if I, if you're having queue time issues, I will say if you play in the morning, it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> because there's so many less survivors trying to play. You just you just go game after game. It's a good time in the morning, but yeah, man, if you try to play in the evening, it's it's tough. Yeah. Week week yeah weekend evenings. These Friday Saturday nights. Yeah, you're gonna be sitting. Yeah. So hopefully more people playing Demon. Leads to faster queue times. So that's what we need. And just a new DLC in general. Three new characters mm -hmm. dropping at the same time. Hopefully that just brings a, a good launch of people into the game. So you uh, have more people to play with. So, all right. So David, um, first look at him. He first he only got, he's only got one outfit that we see so far. But he is rocking the nail gun, which looks like it's going to be his uh, weapon mastery. And uh, the quote with the tweet that came alongside the video, David, Whatever it takes, David will be there until the end. His team-boosting abilities make him a natural guardian for the group, and if he gets his hands on the new nail gun weapon, he'll do some real damage. Yeah, David is... It's not technically confirmed, but it, it is confirmed based on the image we've seen. He is a support character based on the color of his image. Mm -hmm. So that that just description didn't really sound very support it more it sounded like a leader description to be honest yeah it does bit. because like it sounds like if you're near him he rallies up the troops you know he, he, he makes the group more powerful so i'm curious how do you what even is something else you bring to a support character than what we have right now 
Pablo makes amulets, Cheryl drops a healing box, and then lowers uh, Ash lowers your fear. So what would David do? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, he, uh, spoiler alert for the remake, those that haven't seen it. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Seriously, give it a chance. Like, d- eliminate the idea that Ash isn't in it. Like, just cut it out of your brain and just go watch a, a gory Necronomicon Evil Dead movie. Like, it's seriously, yes. it's a great remake. I really, really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. But David, uh, is, he's a, he, he sacrificed himself ultimately to save Mia. So I wonder if there, you could play on that. And his sacrificial abilities. Yeah, if you die, or if he dies when you're near him, you can get more ammo, more health, fear reduction, whatever. Yeah, or like, I um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to do it, because you, you could have it where he can bring somebody back, like resurrect somebody. Without going to the altar. Yeah, like something different like that. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll find out. It's less than a week away. So. Yeah. Uh, and then for Mia... You have all that anger, all that terror. Now she's learned how to use them. Her abilities include converting her own fear into damage and complete resistance to demon possession. So before we talk about that, because <laughs> there there are some thoughts on that. I saw it all over Twitter. Uh, we did get another, another look at her as well. You see her both in like her Michigan, it doesn't say Michigan State, but like her Michigan State sweater and her classic red dress Mm -hmm. that we see at the end of the remake. Really cool. Looks fantastic. Uh, She's rocking a machete uh, in the video as well. Looks cool. Um, Mm -hmm. But, yeah, let's talk about this for a second, because complete resistance to demon possession. A lot of people took that as she's always... Like unable to be possessed. I don't think that's the case. No, I, that the, that's not even that is the thought that didn't come to my head until everyone else was complaining about it, like it was a fact. Yeah, it seems like you know, like uh, Warrior Ash, like Ash um, Army of Darkness Ash, and his little drink that lowers his fear really quickly and gives him like power. I I feel like it'd be something like that. Like maybe she can instantly drop her fear, or she just like if her fear gets too high for thirty seconds. Like how Henry Red for six seconds he has no damage for thirty seconds she can't be possessed at all no matter what her fear level is at right I, I think that's enough because if you give, if you give a warrior which again uh, based on her image not technically confirmed but confirmed she's a warrior you give a warrior the ability to not be possessed that's fucking insane yeah like that's just it's gonna be I understand why people will be upset uh, and they will probably change it very quickly yeah. if that is the case. Uh, yeah, because like that's the one weakness warriors have. Like, obviously, their range damage isn't good, but otherwise, you know, they're so powerful. And then if you can't possess them or really manipulate their fear, that sucks. Yeah. Like that, that would be tough. So I don't, I don't think that's the case for Mia. But I, we'll find out. We'll find out. And yeah, again, that's all coming September eighth, uh, just a few days away, alongside the free demon, the play bringer. So and who knows what else. Uh, right now, the only thing we know weapon-wise is the nail gun. But last time, they had a, I don't know, there was a whole bunch of stuff that came with the Castle Candor. Right. So, I don't want it to be more. We'll see. Uh, all right. Moving on to our next topic, Hulu's Hellraiser. Hellraiser, uh, it's weird because it was dormant for so long. Like, really quiet. And all of a sudden, you got a, like a one-minute teaser, a real short teaser. Mm-hmm. Didn't really get any footage. It was just kind of like the Hellraiser text. Yeah. With Jamie Clayton in the background, unable to really tell <laughs> like what she looked like. But just recently, we got some new images, uh, first of which is Jamie Clayton as Pinhead. And I think this image is enough to shut down all the worries people had about it not being Doug Bradley or it being fe- a female Pinhead. Uh, it sh- she looks fantastic, first of all. I-, I was like, yep, that looks like Pinhead. Great. That looks better than, like, the last two Hellraiser movies, the way Pinhead's looked. True. So I'm all for the look. I think Jamie Clayton is extremely talented. And it's probably going to scare the crap out of people. And you can't forget the fact that, like, Pinhead is really isn't described as either gender. Yeah, it's always been gender fluid. Yeah. And, yeah, it works. It, clearly, we see it, wor- it works. Yeah. So I, I think the only thing that is, like, kind of disappointing with it is just – it's not Doug Bradley, but beyond that, it's, it's whoever plays the character. Fine, as long as it looks good, sounds good. Don't really care. Like all for it. Yeah, Doug Bradley even said, uh, you know, if it has a good story, who cares? Yeah, Doug Bradley. He's 
he got he, there were rumors going around that Doug Bradley was like really upset about being recasted, yeah. and but no, he was like, no, cool, all in. Jamie he, Clayton's great. He's like the plot's got to be good, and doesn't matter who's playing your titular character. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm I'm all for it. Looks fantastic, uh, as well as we got our first look at a new Cenobite, the Mask, and you know Clyde Barker's got a fucked up brain, and now less limitations, a little bit more budget, you can go crazy with the mind of Clyde Barker. So, yeah, run it, dude. Yeah. Like, g- go go as far as you want. Like, some Silent Hill traumatized me when I was a child looking shit. Like, go with it. I think that looks, the Cenobite looks cool. I, honestly, I, I had such low hopes for this Hellraiser movie that seeing these images, I'm like, oh, damn, okay. It was great. Hellraiser needs to be on top again. Like, really, they got the last two movies. I've had no money. Like, no money, no. <laughs> it, of course, they're not going to be successful, so... Yeah, I mean, look at Prey, what they just did with Hulu. Mm -hmm. I think Hellraiser has potential to kind of take over for a little bit as well. Absolutely. Definitely all the potential in the world. Yeah, Hellraiser, (laughs) as much as we think Friday 13th is fucked up, the whole franchise, like, Hellraiser has been (laughs) hit and miss. Yeah, and lately it's just like miss, 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 miss. Mm -hmm. Like, it hasn't been good since really the first three. Yeah. It's just been kind of dormant. Or it's been so low budget that it never even hit a new audience. Mm Mm-hmm. There's a whole generation of people that have not seen Hellraiser. So now's the time. Hopefully this reintroduces people to the film in general, but to the original franchise as well. It'd be great. Yeah. So, uh, why don't you read the synopsis there, partner? Yeah, so uh, in the new Hellraiser movie from Hulu, uh, a young woman struggling with addiction comes into possession of an ancient puzzle box, unaware that its purpose is to summon the Cenobites, a group of sadistic supernatural beings from another dimension. Yeah, so I, I mean, not not a lot of details in that synopsis. No. Sounds like Hellraiser. That, that's it. Uh, one thing that I'm really excited about is the fact that it's directed by David Bruckner, yes. uh, who did The Night House. I love The Night House. So David Bruckner is going to take it seriously. Yes, and that's what matters to me. So coming October seventh, not far away, a month away, and we'll have our hands on a new Hellraiser movie. Which yeah. means, by the way, you may you probably seen these graphics, but Hellraiser movie coming in October. Chucky returns in October. Halloween ends, comes out in October. And there's one more. There's another like classic franchise that's returning in October. Yeah. Maybe it's just maybe it's just Terrifier 2 that I'm thinking of. Maybe it's just Yeah, art. Terrifier 2 is coming this October as well. Yeah. Can be a good year. Yeah, it's going to be nice. Yeah, you're going to have plenty to do it, uh, come October for sure. Um, all right. Last topic of the day. I left it last because I think we might go... I don't know if we'll to go long about it. I just think we have some theories about it. So Friday the 13th, we've been asked a million times, why have we made videos on it? Why haven't we covered the news surrounding it? Are they making a new movie? Is the game coming back? Get a lot. I get that every fucking day. It doesn't matter what the news is. It's, mm-hmm. it's, 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 is DLC coming back? Um, all right, so let's dive through that. Let's, dive, let's talk about why these rumors are happening. First of all, uh, it all started with uh, an interview with, I think it was the Boo Crew, um, they did an interview with Roy Lee, who uh, is a producer that was originally working on... He worked on, like, Rings, and he was going to be working on the Friday the 13th movie back in, like, 2015 that was canceled because of the failure that was Rings. Yes. So, Roy Lee did an interview. He said, uh, yeah, I'd love to talk more about Friday the 13th. I think we'll have... You, you'll probably hear more on that later this year. So, that was like, oh, shit. Like... Friday the 13th is actively moving again. You're involved. What are you doing? You're making a movie. What, what's going on? And it was just kind of like, that was it. Left we, it there. I, I didn't, I never thought, I didn't think too much of it simply because, like, it, I get why we're, we instantly jumped to, oh, he, back when Vertigo was doing a movie, like, Friday the 13th, if they settle, why not just go back to where they were? I If there truly is, like, a settlement, I feel like... We're hitting the reset button on all this. Yeah, you can't just go back to an idea because it's going to be messy. Like the situation, there still is a settlement that it would have to be in play and make both parties happy. So, I feel like you'd be starting completely fresh there. Yeah, and you'd Roy, have to. Yeah, Roy Lee to be involved in that doesn't really make sense to me. I don't know. Right, and yeah, if if you're the guy, you're the face. Say, yeah, I'm involved. You're going to hear something. He never said he's involved. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's just a little weird. I, I didn't want to dig too deep into it. Right. Uh, certainly, Roy Lee could be producing a new Friday of the Teeth movie. Sure. I don't know. I But it just seems a little... 
I, it seems weird that that's where our first piece of news for Friday the 13th right. in years would come from Roy Lee, who's really not a direct, you know, not directly involved with the lawsuit itself in right. general. So I don't know. It just it felt weird to me. And then it got a little bit juicier when Sean Cunningham's cameo, somebody found on his cameo in his description that, you know, director of Friday the 13th, it spawned 12 installments with a 13th installment coming next year. I uh, also didn't dig, didn't think too much about this one either uh, because f- nobody knows when that was put there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I have a feeling it's been there for a, a while. I, I didn't even know Sean Cunningham had a cameo until this happened. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's weird. Um, yeah, I... It, I don't know, man. Like, we were just with Sean Cunningham and San Diego Comic-Con. He was there. Uh, and it just didn't it didn't seem like that was the thing. It no. didn't seem like that was just like, yeah, we're doing a movie. He'll be out next year. <laughs> it just didn't seem like that was the thing. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Again, I, maybe that's new. Maybe it's super old. But it certainly didn't seem like it was something to break the internet over. And it's not there anymore. And he deleted it afterwards. So, oh, all right. Oops. Yeah, he ex- like he accidentally left it there from a while well, ago. There's, and, there's and two. There's two, there's two. There's two things that happened there. Mm-hmm. Either one, it was really old and he forgot about it, and upon people making a big deal about it, a million articles being written about it, he was like, "Oh shit," and took it down. Or it is happening. A new movie's coming out next year, and he put that on there and screwed up, and they're like, "Oh shit, Sean." Why is that there? <laughs> Delete it. I mean, obviously, he's not doing his own his his own cameo setup. I don't know. You, you, I don't know. I would assume there's an agent to do that. I guess I don't know. I it see it's it's a site where I mean because he's going in and looking at his own requests right. and stuff. You buy his Maybe. shit. I don't know. Uh, you think he could handle changing his description of cameo? I don't know. Right. right. <laughs> but yeah. So I wish we could see when. He, he updated it. Like, wh- how long has that been there? Uh, yeah, I mean, it could have been from back before Rings destroyed our hope. Yeah, I don't know how long Cameo has been big, but it yeah. could it could have been that long ago. It I could have know. been, you know, when the rumors were catching up with LeBron James and everything like that. It could have been in there then. And maybe there was a plan, too, before uh, Victor Miller appealed the first time, right? Yeah, dude, it's a mess <laughs> at this point. Who knows at this point? <laughs> yeah, it could have been there a <laughs> long time ago. It could have been recent. We, I don't think we'll ever know. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any way to like check. I don't know if there's any like nerds out there that can figure that out. Yeah. I wish I was that guy, but I'm not that guy. Nope. Uh, so I, basically, what I'm saying is I've I've learned not to get my hopes up with this fucking IP, and just all of it seems weird to me. But it, then it got fucking weirder. It got weirder again. It somehow all this like a three week span, New Line Cinema. Post a fucking screenshot of their a phone. It was a phone screen with an Instagram notification that said Jason Voorhees wants to message you. And my first thought, because what I saw a screenshot of it, um, it was Friday the 13th franchise posted on Twitter. It was a screenshot, and I saw it, and I thought it was just funny. I yeah. thought it was just literally like someone at New Line. Like, I thought it was real. Like, I thought they got somebody with a Jason Voorhees account, tried to message New Line, and they're like, oh, that's funny, and posted a picture. I did not overthink it at all. I I didn't think it was confirming anything. And then the internet broke again. I was like, oh, shit, did I, like, did I miss a confirmation that New Line Cinema is working on a Friday the 13th movie? And then all these articles again were written about it, about this post. And now it's gone. And now it's gone. And it's like... What is going on, dude? Like, everything that keeps being said, it's, like, instantly being deleted by those who said it because why? Because it was a mistake? Because it's being misinterpreted? Or because they weren't supposed to say something and they got in trouble? <laughs> right. It could have been It could have been a social media manager or a social media intern at New Line. Yeah, thought it was fun. It did, I will say, if, if it was just a social media manager... Or I like guess whoever their community manager is, and he just like took a screenshot and posted it. One, it's very different than everything New Line posts on Instagram. Yes, if you look at their Instagram, it's like very professional. And why do you, like you should check with somebody for doing something like that? Like put put together what happened. Like the, of course people are gonna freak out. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna scour LinkedIn and try to see if anyone got fired <laughs> from New Line <laughs> in their uh, community social media department. It it just 
why why is everything getting posted and then deleted? Yeah, it's weird. God, I, I saw people saying it was very cryptic, and I was like, yeah, it is. It is cryptic because like I don't think it's a big conspiracy though. I think it's just people making mistakes. Yeah, I, don't, th- I will say like the Sean Cunningham is one thing. I don't I don't dig too deep into that one. It's like yeah, okay, like Sean Cunningham is fucking eighty years old, and if he is running his cameo, it's like yeah, I mean. Oh shit! Damn. <laughs> yeah, like whatever. Like anything could happen there, but for New Line Cinema to post something and then delete it is so weird to me because it, if they are doing it, if they are making a new Friday Thirteenth movie, they're the production company. Like they're they're the big dogs. Why is it a big deal if they posted their own confirmation on it? It just it's and, a little it's a little weird. And and why not make it big? The franchise has been dormant for so long. Like and there's new. There's new marketing strategies now. You make a trailer for your announcement. Like, yeah. Friday the 13th yeah. is back, coming soon, coming 2024, <laughs> yeah. 25. Like, you don't just be like, oh, hey, Jason, what's up? Yeah, th- this is why, th- this is the main reason why I don't want to believe it. Like, I think right. there's maybe, I think there's a chance that New Line is <laughs> making another movie. Like, I, I I get it, if that if that is the case. The one reason I don't want to believe it is because... If you know a year from now, and we're going to see Friday the Thirteenth in theaters and blah blah, blah. if we look back and we're like, "Wow, this was confirmed via a fucking phone screenshot on Instagram," I just feel like it'd be a little disappointing. (laughs) Yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, marketing nowadays, you you have a trailer, you have a trailer for a ten second trailer for an announcement, like that's all it takes, and then you, you win. Yeah, you could do a lot of. A lot of fun things with with Jason Voorhees to announce a new uh, a new movie. Yeah, you 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 drop a little like thing that little video that says Jason Voorhees coming back. You know, a couple hours later, boom, here's an exclusive interview with the director of the next movie. Yeah, coming out via Collider or whatever, and yeah. then oh, now here's a podcast with the director talking about the plot. Like you could own <laughs> yeah, everything, the, or you know whoever's playing Jason, right? Like, you could do some fun stuff. Yeah, it seemed like a screenshot of an Instagram notification. It, I, I do. I think it may have just been for fun. I think it may have been a legit screenshot, and they were just like, "Oh, on, that's fun." On Thursday, September first, twenty twenty two, of all days. Yeah, it it's all just so weird. Also, yeah, again Thursday. Why wouldn't you wait until one a Friday to a Friday the thirteenth? Yeah. I will, I will say this: If this is an all intentional, and and this is like a, a big marketing scheme to get people theorizing, well done yeah. because it fucking works. Yeah. Like the world keeps blowing up every time Friday the 13th is brought up right now, and so yeah, uh, go crazy. But them deleting it is weird, uh, right? Yeah, you, you can edit the caption, you can say nothing. That's the that's what most companies would do. Oh shit! All right, avoid <laughs> dodge at all costs. <laughs> I mean, yeah. deleting it obviously, you know, art. Hundreds of articles were written about it in the first 24 hours. I think it just went down the day we're recording this, so one day later. Okay. So I believe it was up for 24 hours, maybe a little more. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. it took, it took them a while to delete that thing. A whole, yeah, a whole, a whole business day. <laughs> yeah. And, mm. and it took them that long to be like, we need to take this down if it wasn't supposed to be posted. Yeah, it, it seems intentional in that way. Right. Uh, yeah. I will... We'll see. I don't know. It's regardless whether it's legit news or not. Just seeing so many people talk about Friday the Thirteenth again is exciting. Obviously, we got to be close. Regardless, like whether or not all this shit happened or not, it's been a while. Like we've been sitting pretty dormant on lawsuit news for a while. Like, it, come on. Um, I think Larry Zerner said he hasn't heard anything though. That's oh. that's my guy. So that's who I go to for this. Tr- true. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> that's our. That's a source. Yeah, you would think if if he heard something, or you think if somebody knows anything, it would be Larry. But I do. What What are your thoughts on this though? If Friday the 13th is coming back, coming back next year, w- remake to this or a sequel to the remake, a new movie entirely? Do they go the requel route? Like right now, requels are hot. That's what I would say. I would say fuck the remake. No offense, but it's too late. You're not going to get like Jared Padalecki back. No. So pick up after four or six or that's it. <laughs> four or six. Yeah, anything else? You could kind or a sequel of, to the original. Or well, God, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't either. But you could do seven theoretically. Like there's fun to be had there. 
I think four is the answer, though. I think Kimberly Beck just went to a convention recently. Just saying. It's fun, you know, to see all these fan films be coming out that are direct sequels to different movies in the franchise, get people's own takes. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, you could really do a, a requel to, to any movie in the franchise. And it'd be interesting. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think. Or or if it's not a requel, something completely original. Probably another another remake. Yeah. You just, I don't think you do a sequel to the remake anymore. Mm. It's, it's been 13 years. I, it just doesn't seem necessary. But if you are doing a new take on Friday the 13th entirely, you could still bring back Derek Mears. Have yeah. Derek do it again. I, I'm sure Kane would do it again if, if everything worked out that way. Um, CJ would do it. CJ like Graham would probably do it. I, I would want to see somebody who's already done it. Like I would want to, whether that's Kane, whether that's CJ, Derek, I'd want to see somebody who's done it do it again. Yeah, that that would be really cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, requels are hot right now. That that's definitely I think the route that they the easiest route, I guess. Yeah, they could do a hollow like a Halloween run, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I wish it would have happened all at the same time so that they were competing again. Like I think how I think what is Halloween kills doesn't happen. It doesn't like colossally fail like it in my opinion it did. Sorry. Like I don't think it fucks up that bad if it's competing with something like jason at the same time right yeah right now michael's the top dog freddy's asleep <laughs> leatherface is chilling yeah that, who who knows what's next for for both freddy and and leatherface freddy especially like dude it just like that went dormant too mike flanagan saying he had an idea and was pitching it and stuff and what happened where is it <laughs> yeah. what's going on i mean the, the power of the internet even since 2009 even is is insane like yeah you have these directors saying here's my pitch and if enough people go after it the studio kind of has no choice but to be like oh well people are gonna watch it people we're gonna make money whether it's good or bad people are gonna go see it so uh, yeah him conjuring up hype with uh with nightmare on elm street and all that stuff but yeah it would be really cool to see these horror icons be fighting instead of Chucky on the silver screen, Michael being the only one doing anything, and yeah. then Leatherface is like, get Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we may miss the opportunity to have Michael and Jason competing in theaters. You could do Jason and Freddy, though, if it lines up right, which would be nice. Maybe someday. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, all right, well, that's going to wrap this episode of Slashcast. It's good to be back just to talk about random things. Let us know your uh, thoughts on all this in the comments below. Uh, Friday the 13th, Evil Dead, Hellraiser, Halloween Ends, and all of it. Let us know what you're thinking. Um, yeah, it's good to be back. Make sure you subscribe to notifications on so you don't miss any future episodes. And, Nick, you got anything else? Welcome back. It's good to see you. All right, with that, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.